Hello everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making an 1830s silk dress. Alright, we get to work with silk finally. I have missed silk. Just getting out and touching it is just so nice. I've been working far too long with cotton. I'm not used to that. So this is going to be an 1830s dress and yeah, I think we're going to decorate it with little Van Dyke triangle point things, which will be loads of fun and be super cute. I think we're going to start by ribbing skirt panels. I need my skirt panels 42 inches long and I'm going to do two and a half width. This is a 55 width, actually really a 54 width silk and with seam allowances it'll be about 53. That's going to give me roughly a 137 inch circumference, which is um, right up, right down the middle of 1830s dresses. So, I'm going to go ahead and rip this. Alright, here are the bodice pieces, all ready to get cut out. I actually managed to fit, I actually managed to fit all three bodice pieces on the half of the skirt that was left from when I got the skirt. So, or the half of the panel, I suppose, that was left in the skirt. So, yay. I'm going to go ahead and cut all this out. I am cutting a three-piece back, um, mostly because the original on copying shows piping in the seam, which is really interesting. I was going to copy that, um, so it's going to be a lot of piping, which is not going to be fun, but um, that was an interesting feature. So, piping on that seam, piper, piping in the shoulders, piping on the front. Um, there's going to be piping everywhere on this dress, plus the Van Dykes. It's going to be really cool. It's going to look really cute. But these are some giant sleeves. I even cut some of it off. It's like it was just like too big. So here's the first layer of the pelerine. Um, I went back and forth on this pelerine, honestly, because. The fashion plate I'm copying has little Van Dyke corners. I wasn't sure how I wanted to add them. I really, really, really did not want to have to bind all those edges because I don't do very well with binding. I knew it wasn't going to look good and I just didn't want to have that frustration. I was going to try it anyway and then I just decided, you know what, these little triangle bits for trimming the sleeves and the neckline and that sort of thing, why not do the same thing on a bigger scale with the pelerine and that way it would be more cohesive with the dress. So I think that's what we're going to do. So this pelerine pattern is from the Workwoman's Guide. It's on page 94. It's figure 6 of the pelerines, and it was the shape that had a whole bunch of different op size options, and I chose size 2, which is really supposed to be for a cloak, but I did cut it down slightly, and then I also rounded out this edge. take some of the scrap silk and practice cutting um, little squares to see what size I need for each part because what we're going to do is we're going to cut squares. Let's see. Let's just try this. So if I had a two inch square, how big is that? Point what I get. So you fold it in this way and fold it in that way. So this, that's a good size point, I think, for the, um, let's try an inch and a half and see where it gets me. I think I like this two inch size, though. We're going to see. That's really tiny. Ooh, that's really good too, though. That looks about right, actually. Okay, so inch and a half squares, folded over twice, um, at least for the cuffs and the neckline. I don't think I'm going to add them anywhere else. And then we'll try to get some bigger ones for the pelerine. Next up, I get to cut 375 inches of piping, which is just ridiculous. For reference, on my 1860s gowns, typically I will cut about 95 inches of piping. So yeah, 375 is a lot of piping. 
first step is to work on the skirt. Uh, at least that's my first step. I don't think it really matters if you really do the bottoms of the skirt first. I always do the skirt first. And so over here, hand stitching skirt panels together. After this, I'll do the lining. And then we're going to try to attach them together. Alright, I am working on this trim. And um, I cut one and a half inch squares as I showed. I think they may have been a bit too small, but I'm going to use them anyway. I kind of like... I kind of like the small look. I think that'll work out well. So what I'm doing is I have my little one and a half inch square. I'm folding two points in and then folding the other two points in and ironing it down. And it makes a nice little triangle. And so these raw edges at the bottom are going to get covered by piping and binding and that sort of thing. But yeah, I am making a lot of these. Um, in all actuality, I'm I don't know how many I'm going to need simply because I haven't put the bodice together yet and I don't know how many inches I need. So I'm going to make several tonight and then as I'm putting the bodice together I get to decide how often I want them. So I definitely want them on the neckline and the wrist. So yeah, I'm going to make a couple dozen of these and hopefully that'll be enough. Alright, so since all these seams have to be piped, I've been working on making piping. So this is the center front, and uh, my first step when doing piping on seams that are, um, I guess interior seams, so not, not, not like, um, so not like, um, waistline and neckline, but any interior seams, I always base it in first, because if I sandwich the piping, then I don't have a line, I have to really feel for that seam there. I find if I make a quick, not very nice basting stitch, I'll have a line to do my stitching. And now on this side, I've been doing a back stitch, just to be super secure. And of course, I'm also going to need to type pipe. And of course, I'm also going to need to pipe the shoulder seams and make piping for the neckline and waistline and arm thighs. I think every seam in this bodice is piped except for the side seams. And I don't think the ones in the original were piped, the, the side seams anyway. I was kind of looking at them. It's hard to tell because it's right under the arm in the shadow of the sleeve. But it really, to me, does not look like they're piped. And since piping is supposed to be a decorative detail and you don't see the underarm seam, Kind of makes sense that it wouldn't be piped. That is what it looks like. So it's almost not noticeable. It's a very fine detail. I kind of like it. And I think it looks really good, especially in the back scene. So I'm going to continue this and I shall see you with a piped bodice. All right, so the basic shape of the bodice is put together now um, with all of our piping. So there's our center front piping we worked on. Here's the side back with its piping and its shoulder seam with the piping. Um, I'm going to cut arms by piping next, but I think we're going to go ahead and work on the waist too. So I need to mark my darts, which I'm going to do the same thing I did in the last 1830s dress, because I made that last week, and in theory the mock-up should still fit a week later. So from the center front it was 4 inches. There's only one dart. It's 5.5 or 5 and a quarter inches tall. It's 3 inches wide. And this is more like five inches. Right. So that's essentially that. And make sure that they're at least shaped the right way. Yeah, they're going out. So that's good. Just slightly. Okay. So I can stitch those. I'm going to do that by back stitching. And then we're also going to need to measure. I'll pull up my pattern piece and see how much the ends need to be folded over. So I honestly don't remember at this very moment. Alright, we are ready to work on sleeves. So here's my fun looking, really hooked sleeve here. And I'm just going to sew it up. I have been using a running stitch because I'm lazy. And it works. And I also made up the lining piece separately. And so, next step is to put them together and do the little 
running stitch all along the edge so that I can gather it up. And I'm going to stitch this all the way to this point. I'm leaving a five and a half inch space open um, to get my arm through because this is a very fitted type of sleeve. All right, so we are ready to put in some sleeves. I put in one. Um, actually, quite a lot of things got done. I went ahead and played with the trim of the neckline and got that to work. It looks really nice. Uh, I did not film that simply because I didn't know what I was doing yet. So I'm going to show you what I did with this on the cuffs and the pillory because we're doing the same thing. But um, it took me a while to figure out the piping plus trim plus finished back piece. So it's thicker than normal. You had to do your piping and then do your um, trim and then put a bias binding over top to hide those edges. Um, it looks it looks identical to what I'm seeing in the originals, um, but of course I haven't seen one up close and personal, so I can really say that's how they did it. But it's the way I did it. It's the way that makes sense, and it looks like the originals. So I feel pretty confident that this is what they would have done. Um, but the trim looks really really nice. Um, little had a little bit of issue getting them even, um, even though I cut them all the same size. There's a few that are a little larger than. The others but overall it looks really good and I'm excited about it so yeah we're going to look at that a little bit later right now we're sewing in sleeves so yes I already had the piping put in I had the gathering thread put in and now I'm just going to do a back stitch really because it's very thick After this, I'm going to put in closures for the bodice. And then the bodice is basically done. Well, sleeves aren't, but the bodice is. Because I still have to like put trim in and um, do piping for the sleeves there. That'll get done. The bodice itself will be done as soon as I put in hooks and eyes. Alright, so I am working on the pelerine one with a little helper over here. Little tail. Um, and I have trimmed out the first part of the pelerine or the top part. This is a two-part coloring. So here's the first part with its um, trim. And I did it the exact same way I did the trim on the bodice and sleeves. I just made them gradually bigger. So I started off with the exact same size um, points. I did four that were the same size and I did three that were um, half inch bigger and then two that are half inch bigger and then two more that are half inch bigger. Two more that are half inch bigger and then I got to the big ones. Um, which I believe are four inches square that I, you know, folded just exactly the same, same way. So there's my little opening there. And so now I'm working on the bottom part. So, yeah, I have all my lovely triangles that I'm sewing together. Kind of working my way back up. So I got to the bigger ones. Now I'm working back up to the smaller ones. Here are my two and a half inch ones, which I have three. And I am trying to make sure that the um, opening stays on the same side. That way it at least looks the same. And I get to sew it back on to the bottom of the pelerine just like we did with the sleeves and like I did with the bodice. I am working with not enough fabric for this project. I really didn't expect to take this much. Although honestly, I hadn't designed the dress when I bought the fabric. So I just bought my usual eight yards and usually what I do is no matter what my design is, I have to make it with fit within that eight yards. Which usually works out just fine. Um, I did have to piece several of these, especially the larger ones. But I ended to hide almost all the piecing. This is the only one that's going to show from the front is this right here. Everything else I put on the back or is inside. So this one's on the back. The rest of them, some of them are pieced three or four times. They're just hidden on the inside. So you really can't tell. Here are my normal one. Here are my normal. And this is my normal one and a half inch ones that I used on the sleeves and bodice. 
working our way back up. my last little piece. All right, this is my last one. I'm going to just kind of roughly tie this off and um, I can start just basting it on to the edge of the pelerine. very last step on the pelerine and then we get to work on skirt and be done so I have um, the bottom half of the uh, pelerine and I put in all my graduating little squares like we talked about and we cut and um, after putting in the piping and all that we're just binding it up just going through the lining as we usually would for just piping that way, uh, we don't see the stitches from the front side. Alright, so we are nearly done with it. It's taken a whole lot longer than I expected it to, mostly because I wasn't motivated to do the project and I just sat it down and looked at it for a really long time every day instead of actually working on it. That was my own fault. So I've been working on attaching the skirt to the bodice. I knife pleated most of it, so there's my, my center front pleats are all going that way. And I gauged the last couple inches in the back. I've seen lots of originals that did that. Um, I like it because then I don't have to make sure that my pleating math is exact because the gauging will take care of it. So, here's my little gauging in the very back and the rest of the pleats. I have one more section over here to gauge. It's just the last couple of inches. Gauging threads are already put in. And at which point, once that gets stitched on, we can try on the whole project because it is all done. And if we can try accessorizing it and playing around and having fun with an 1830s dress. So I will see you in a moment with a completed gown. And here it is. Uh, somewhat, I can't get it done up in the back. I tried. My hands can reach back there, but because of these giant poofy sleeves, I can't actually do anything. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to be a problem. I was like, I can zipper myself up into dresses. Why can't I do hooks and eyes? Well, I can't, not with these. So um, it's not fitted correctly because, um, <laughs> yeah. So it looks rather large in the waist. It's mostly because I haven't been able to actually do up anything back there. Um, but other than that, it fits really well. I mean, there's no creasing or anything of sorts um, on the bodice itself. And I did try to put a belt there to kind of cinch it in to kind of hopefully give the effect somewhat, but um, essentially there's the dress with all this lovely little um, trim work on the cuff and of course on the neckline. I did up my hair in 1830s, just, you know, special occasion, but um, yeah, that's about as good as it's going to get for right now. Um, let's go ahead and try on the pelerine. Maybe this will hide some of it. Yeah. Oh, yay. I had to pin this shut. I don't feel like putting a, I don't feel like putting a brooch in right now. We're gonna pin it shut. It 
hope it works. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right, and there we are. That is very 1830s. I was a little concerned about um, the neckline being too low for the pillowing because it kind of comes out like this. But because it's a little bit of a higher low neckline, if that makes any sense whatsoever, um, it actually works. So here's the back now. Probably doesn't cover everything, but it covers some of it. So that is the gown. I am super happy with it. It certainly took a lot longer than I was expecting, but um, it works and it fits. And if I had someone here to um, do me up in the back, I think it would look rather nice. Unfortunately, I don't have that. But yeah, so we're dealing with what we got here, which is an 1830s dress. <laughs> I'm very happy to have a silk dress, finally. Um, it's the right hem length, so let me try to um, move the camera down so you can kind of see. I'll sort of see. <laughs> it's there. Let me go a little bit further down. At least you can see the pretty pleats now. There we go. Maybe that'll do it. I'm going to step on a dog if I go any further. But yeah, it's a good 1830s length. I've got my shoes on that I would normally wear if I was, you know, wearing this. And um, it's good and poofy. Like, it's a good skirt circumference, I think. And I think the um, amount of folds still are good. I really am glad that we lined this silk. I think it helps it kind of stand out a little bit more. Let me go before I can see you again. But yeah, that is the 1830s um, in a nutshell. I'm um, glad we got a second dress in. I think I'm going to take a break from 1830s dresses for a while. I have a couple more 1860s ones I need to fix up. And some other 1830s products we need to get out of the way. But as far as dresses, I think the two that I have are a really good start. I have a good dress and I have like a cotton one if I need to you know, get a little dirty. But yeah, that is the 1830s silk dress. I have another length of silk that's to be made into an 1830s dress that we'll get to eventually. I don't need it anytime soon, so maybe like a year or so before we actually get to it, but I have it. Um, and I think our next 1830s project is going to be a riding habit as far as um, gown-ish garments go. Yeah, a couple months I think we're going to start that. But uh, I am very pleased with this and how it turned out. And I think it's very appropriately 1830s. I think it would be a good dress for Sarah simply because it's um, it's not, it's subdued in the sense that it's you know a not a, it's not a crazy color. It's not a crazy pattern. It is um, plain brown silk, so I think it would be good for the things I usually would do Sarah at. But it's still you know a rich silk. It's still fashionable, so I think it would be a good option for her. So yeah, I did choose a uh, very fancy, fun little um, belt today. Uh, I have other ones that we could use too, but I thought this was a really nice little pop of color. And since it's brown, I can really go to any direction I want with um, accessories. So any of the caps would work. Um, either bonnet would look good. I think this one would look especially good with the little blue bonnet. I say little. It's 1830. They're not little, but you know, the blue bonnet. Um, I have pink silk I can make into a belt. Yeah, so... It'll go with most anything that I choose to put it with, um, which is a really good thing, so it'll be very versatile. But I am very pleased with how the Van Dykes turned out. Um, I think overall the effect is really nice. I think the all the pretty little uh, piping that I did, it was a really good choice to do that. I can't see back there, but when I have it off of me, I really like the, the um, you, where the seams come back and you see the piping and on the shoulder seams and all that. I think it's a really good choice. And it's a really nice little small detail that I think adds a lot of character to a gown. And yeah, this gown used a lot of piping and a lot of bias. So yeah, it did take me longer than I expected it to, but I think I'm overall happy with the results. Um, the waistline looks really good. I really like the directional knife pleat because I really thought before I really started studying gauging and pleating, that gauging was earlier and that most 1830s dresses were gauged and then as you get later on into like the 1850s and 60s you start seeing more pleated gowns and I was really surprised on how many gowns were pleated in the 1830s particularly silk gowns so my original plan was to gauge this whole thing but once I started going back to the original garment which is always of course like the best thing to do 
um, I started realizing how many were pleated and how many of those just had a little bit of gauging in the back. So that's what I chose to do. Um, but overall, very happy with it. I think it turned out super cute. And I look forward to more 1830s adventures. So thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you in the next video.